Denny Hamlin endorses Jamie McMurray for the Fox booth, and Corey LaJoy mentions an interesting candidate for that SHR number 10 car. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. We're going to talk a little silly season today with Eric Almirola retiring at the end of this season. That Stuart Haas Racing number 10 car is seen as one of the top rides on the potential market. We will get to that in just a moment. But before we talk silly season on the track, let's talk about that revolving door of guests in the Fox Sports TV booth. I've enjoyed Fox's approach to that third man in the booth this year. Mike Joy, even though he's getting a little older, is still a very solid play-by-play -play guy. Clint Boyer, he's the personality, he's the character. Not everyone's gonna love him all the time, but at least he brings energy more times than not. That third spot though, the second analyst position, is crucial. We've heard Tony Stewart fill that role, Matt Kenseth has filled that role, Danica Patrick has been there. At Darlington, we had Bill Elliott, Bobby Labonte, and Richard Petty at different points. Larry McReynolds returned to that role for one week as well, but to me, the standout of the bunch so far has been Jamie McMurray. This past weekend at Kansas, Jamie McMurray slid perfectly into that role. His delivery was smooth. He was a natural fit alongside Mike Joy and Clint Boyer. I thought he provided solid analysis, a little humor here and there, especially when they're all riffing about the Eric Jones crew trying to get the wheel off. He was a beautiful contrast to Clint Boyer. Boyer, like I said, he's the character. He's the energy. Jamie McMurray, as a result, has to shoulder most of the analytical responsibility. I've said this before, but in my perfect NASCAR TV booth, both color commentators would be fairly analytical. Unfortunately, Clint Boyer is far from that, as demonstrated when Chad Knauss was in the booth and had a packet of notes, as opposed to Clint Boyer's like post-it note. Jamie McMurray highlighted that difference once again this weekend when during the in-race reporter, you know, stage break interviews, McMurray, when he interviewed Kyle Busch over the radio, he asked him a thoughtful question about how the grooves were changing, if the high line was still more dominant, and he got a thoughtful, kind of insightful answer from Kyle Busch behind the wheel. In stage two, when Boyer radioed stage winner Kurt Busch, he asked his basic, ah, what you got out there question and got a not nearly as insightful answer. What I'm trying to say is that I want more Jamie McMurray's in the TV booth. And guys like Clint Boyer, they still have a place in the broadcast, but let's just say there's a reason Rutledge Wood isn't in the TV booth for NBC. I'm not the only one, apparently, who was impressed by Jamie McMurray's TV performance this past weekend. Denny Hamlin tweeted earlier this week, Dear NASCAR on Fox, hire Jamie McMurray to be in the booth for the rest of the year and 2023 also. The mix of his knowledge of the sport and his analysis of what's going on on the track is exactly what we need. Thank you. I co-sign that letter to NASCAR on Fox. I hope they're listening. And honestly, Denny Hamlin's tweet there has, as of this morning, almost 10,000 likes. And many others in the industry, including some of McMurray's former co-workers, are endorsing McMurray as well, like Matt Yoakum, who now works for CBS. I believe he'll still be on the SRX broadcast this summer. He chimed in, said it four or five years ago to the bosses. Checks all the boxes, plus a couple bling bling rings, Daytona 500 the Brickyard, and Jamie McMurray is simply a genuine guy. Alan Kavana, who used to work for Fox, said, I championed this back when I did truck pits. I would get info from crew chiefs, stuff on the radio, prepping a report, setups, handling, driver feedback, nuanced stuff. Jamie would see it in the car slash truck from the booth or Charlotte and say it before I could. He's great. Several ringing endorsements from industry professionals and top-notch on-track competitors. Yes, NASCAR and Fox should absolutely give Jamie McMurray more opportunities in the TV booth. And honestly, I hate to say it, but I don't really want to see Clint Boyer back after this year. I don't know what his contract looks like, but to me, he's kind of run his course already. My pie-in-the-sky dream television booth for next year would be Mike Joy in his usual play-by-play -play role, Jamie McMurray as an analyst, the driver analyst, and the other Mac, Larry McReynolds, who's still only 63 years old and continues to say that he is willing to go on the road and do more TV stuff. I'd put him in that third chair. He brings some energy and some colorful personality, but he's also very detail-oriented, knows how to present nuanced information to a massive audience. So he's also a crew chief. So you have your crew chief analyst, your driver analyst, and your play-by-play -play guy. I think that's the dream team right there. Obviously, Mike Joy's getting a little older. I think he's still really good, but at some point in the near future, you'll need some sort of replacement for him, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For now, we need to get the analysts right, and I think Mac and Mac are the way to do it.
Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you like the idea of Jamie McMurray taking on a, a larger role on Sundays? Do you like Clint Boyer? Do you want to see Boyer and McMurray together more? Did you like one of the other analysts more or from earlier this season? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's move on and talk silly season for just a moment. Silly season's been fairly quiet so far in early 2022. Now things heated up a little a few weeks ago when Kyle Busch discussed his uncertain future at Joe Gibbs Racing. Still no update there, so that's a huge question mark hanging over everyone's heads. But earlier this week, actually this weekend, Sunday, Corey LaJoy's Stacking Pennies podcast posted a short clip, their spare change segment. And in this segment, LaJoy and his co-hosts discuss some uh, potential silly season rumors and rumblings, or as they put it, whispers. Talking about that 10 car for Stuart Haas Racing, which is expected to be available next year since Eric Almarola is retiring, Corey LaJoy mentioned an interesting name as a possible leading candidate. I don't know. I think there's a, a list of guys that they're going to be looking at for that. Uh, John Hunter certainly is strong as he's been running that truck. I know he's tied in with Toyota as well, but I'm sure his people are you know, having the, the whispers in the garage. John Hunter Nemechek does have one year of NASCAR Cup Series experience. In 2020, at the age of 23, he drove for Front Row Motorsports and didn't run very well. He had a couple notable top 10s early in the season or like right after we came back from the pandemic. Of course, this was the pandemic year. Not many fans in the stands, no practice, no qualifying for most races. He didn't have a few top 10s, but he also led the series in incidents, like on track incidents. After that year, seeing that he had no real competitive future with Front Row, he chose to go truck series racing and was hired by Kyle Busch and Toyota to drive the four truck. And last year, they were extremely successful together. He won five races and 22 starts, the full schedule. A 9.8 average finish made it to the championship four at the end of the year. This year shaping up very similarly. He has one win already this year. He's got an average finish of 11.1. He's second in traditional points. He's in one of the best trucks. With that comes high expectations. And so far in the last year and a half, I think he's met those expectations. Has he done well enough for me to trust him in a full-time Cup Series ride once again? I'm not so sure. And as LaJoy mentions, you know, Nemechek is currently a Toyota driver. I don't know just how deep that connection truly is. And I know Toyota's got some other talented young guns like Ty Gibbs in the Xfinity Series, who's going to be looking for a Cup ride before long. Obviously now Toyota does have another Toyota team with 2311 that I, I feel like they're always looking to expand if they, if they have the sponsorship money to do so and the, the charter is available. So I don't know if Toyota would be willing to let John Hunter Nemechek walk away. But if Ford's offering him something good, if SHR approaches him with a great deal, I see no reason why Nemechek wouldn't jump at it. The 10 car hasn't been great the last few years. I wouldn't consider it a top 10 ride in the NASCAR Cup Series, but it's a playoff capable ride and it's a ride that can win a race or two a season. I think anyone in the truck series would be happy to race for Stuart Haas in the NASCAR Cup Series. It sounds like Corey LaJoy maybe knows something we don't know. He's had a conversation or two because I've not heard John Hernimacek's name thrown around too seriously in regards to the 10 car, but Corey LaJoy here in May is bringing it up. When Eric Almarola announced his retirement a few months ago, I think most people kind of assumed that Ryan Priest was going to be the front runner for that ride. Ford signed him as a development driver this past off season. He's running a few truck starts, making a few expandy. He's even made a cup start this year for Rick Ware. But with that signing, it seemed Priest was in prime position to replace either Almarola or Harvick, whoever retires first, really. Maybe SHR isn't sold on Ryan Priest just yet. Maybe they want to wait another year until maybe Kevin Harvick retires. His contract ends after the 2023 season. Of course, Kevin Harvick's agency represents represents Ryan Priest, so maybe that's a more natural replacement in time for the 2024 season. So maybe SHR just wants to wait a little while and they see John Hunter Nemechek as a rising young star who has cup experience. Maybe from their perspective, that makes a lot more sense to put him in the 10 next year and then save Priest for maybe the four in a couple seasons. I don't know, it really gets complicated because I don't know how much sponsorship John Hunter Nemechek has. Seems like nearly every sponsor on his truck is a KBM Toyota partner. Obviously he has family ties to racing. His father Joe Nemechek has raced for years and years and years. So his family knows the industry. I'm sure they have some connections, but I don't see John Hunter bringing a ton of funding over to SHR or any team. Same kind of goes for Ryan Priest though. Like he has Hunt Brothers Pizza as a sponsor. We've seen them on his truck the last couple of years, like when he won at Nashville last year. 
later, but that has to be a sponsorship that Kevin Harvick is helping him land through that agency, through their whole program. We will see. It is still early in silly season, and there are a ton of names that could potentially be eyeing a new ride that I haven't even mentioned yet. Like Noah Gregson, who's been cutting his teeth in the Xfinity series for the last few years and the last couple is really starting to see some solid success. At Dover a couple weeks ago, he was talking like he sees the Cup Series in his near future, like a full-time ride. He's eyeing one. There are other drivers whose contract situations are kind of unknown, like Eric Jones. Obviously, Kyle Busch, I guess, is looking for a new ride, but I don't see him leaving Gibbs for SHR. Stenhouse, maybe? He does have a connection to Harvick, but I, I don't... LaJoy doesn't sound like he thinks he's going anywhere. And actually, speaking of LaJoy, I don't think he's under contract for sure through next year. I'll be a little surprised if he leaves, but I guess even his situation, a lot of NASCAR contracts are kept very under wraps, so there's a lot of speculation that goes into it. Point is, it's early, but we're starting to hear rumblings. John Harnimacek's a name being mentioned for SHR. We'll see how much weight that rumor carries as the summer months go on and on and on. But share your thoughts down below. Do you think Nemechek would be a good candidate for that 10 car? Are you hoping Ryan Priest gets it? Maybe somebody else? Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We talk NASCAR day in, day out. We're hosting a live stream tomorrow, Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Hope to see you there. And also a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. As always, couldn't do this show without your tremendous support. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you again very, very soon. Have a great rest of your day.